saw the, the coming attractions. The girl had no shirt on. Oh, One scene. Three. I went and saw the film. Oh. That's the only scene. Well, you saved me four bucks, right? There. Tonight, almost live, it's America Tonight. 30 minutes of TV on the UBS network. Located in the UBS Broadcasting Mall in El Tacoma, California. The unfinished furniture capital of the world. With General Rafael Esteban de Carrillos. With an inside look at what's going on in certain cases. The muscle flexors. The 20-inch necks who flex their pecs. And Miss Elkie Summer, who's supposed to be someplace else for money. With the music of Happy Kind and the Mirth Makers. And me. Excuse me, I was just, we had some children on last night, and I was counting the number of jellies that are missing because I get billed for them, okay? Uh, good evening, and welcome once again to America Tonight. I say again, if it's your first time, then welcome once. You know, an awful lot of people are scared to death of the dentist, and more specifically, they're scared of what happens when they get into the dentist's chair. Well, actually, not the dentist's chair, because he probably keeps that in his private office. You know what, you know what I mean, or I, at least you did. Okay, anyway, I'm a slightly different kind of guy. I have more difficulty with uh, sitting in the dentist's waiting room, actually. It's virtually the only time in my life that I can't avoid reading Newsweek magazine. Because in his, uh, <clears throat> in his waiting room, we've only got two choices. We've got Newsweek, we've got Jack and Jill. And uh, unfortunately, Jack and Jill doesn't have a media section, so I always end up reading something in Newsweek that depresses me. Uh, yesterday, I read an issue from a couple of months back or so, and there was this item that said, NBC denies considering Phil Donahue for the new host of the Today Show, replacing Tom Brokaw. Okay. Now, you have no way of knowing if these things are true. I skimmed through a copy of, in fact, of Jack and Jill's just to, you know, just to check. <laughs> not, not, nothing about Donahue. And the depressing thing is that a lot of you are saying, out there probably saying, Phil Donahue? And yet, NB <laughs> yet NBC thinks he's important enough to deny considering him. Not that I'm knocking Mr. Donahue. After all, we both started out in small Ohio townships in Fernwood, and he was in Dayton, and the fact that uh, 10 years later, he's only made it as far west as Chicago, hey. <laughs> it's no reflection on his talent, only on his ability to raise the bus fare. But <laughs> according to the, to the article, he's a nice gray-haired man who runs a talk show where he interviews a lot of unwed mothers and unwed fathers, probably some unwed children, unwed everybody, the whole unwed scene, that kind of thing. Well, I'm sure. He is good enough to at least be considered as Tom Brokaw's replacement. But it just makes me wonder why NBC doesn't have the basic fairness to at least deny considering me for the job. Not that I uh, even want to move to New York or get up that early just for some lousy 300,000 clams a year. I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn my whole life upside down like that for a penny less than 350, and that's true. Nonetheless, I would appreciate the courtesy of a denial, just for the sake of some peace of mind. Okay, well, my next dentist appointment is about two months, so if NBC could uh, deny considering me for Tom Brokaw's job sometime this week, I think it'll probably hit Newsweek just in time, uh, or they could maybe send a press release to Captain Andy's corner, Jack and Jill, and I'll look for it there. Okay, <laughs> that's enough. Oh, here he is, Jerry Hubbard. Yeah, I, I love magazines, and I'm always disappointed on a plane when the only thing they have is Jack and Jill. Yeah. You know, uh, but they, they uh, have others up front. Oh, yeah? yeah. First class? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, but I, those magazines, you should read them. You should make a point. We're in the public eye, and we should uh, keep our finger on what's happening today. And I like nothing better at the end of a day to sit down and relax. I loosen my tie, and I'll try to read Time, Newsweek, you know, from cover to cover, thoroughly. Not just skim through it, but that's kind of difficult to get all the way through. Sure, you know? sure. You just get up to an interesting part, and then uh, the druggist will say something like, uh, this isn't a library, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so you try to ignore him and think maybe he's talking to someone else. You don't else. buy the magazines. You try to do it right there in the drugstore? Well, as many as, as I can, sure, because uh, you test drive a car, don't you? You just go and say, I'll take that one. <laughs> Never judge a book by its cover. And then this guy has started stapling together certain papers and magazines, you know, and by the time you get them open, 
You get these cuts under your nails, and who needs it? What do you do about the ones? I know they're your favorites. They have that little brown paper thing around them to hold them shut, Jerry. What do you do about those? They're not bad, because you, you, uh, you've got to be careful. You could just rip them off when he's not uh, looking. You know? and say, I didn't do that. It was this way when I came in. Some kid must have done it. Yeah. <laughs> Good thinking. Well, we have I a hope big... he's not watching. We have a big show tonight. Um, we have a very special guest. Miss Elkie Summers, a gorgeous and talented actress, and this amazing thing is, the most amazing thing, I guess, is that she wasn't even born in this country. Only in America could that happen. That's true. <laughs> Actually, she was not even booked on our show, and again, only on America Tonight could that happen. Uh, but she is here at the UBS studios to tape a uh, guest segment, sort of, kind of thing, on a special one-hour edition of the UBS children's show, Taters the Clown. So she, oh, isn't he wonderful? <laughs> that makes him so special is he talks the same language as those six-year-olds, both on and off camera. That's right. And that's, that's why they trust him, so. Yes. So, <laughs> I had to drive him to work and take him home, and he, he sits up there and had that little seat for him, and he sits up there in the middle of the seat and pretends he drives. He's uh -huh. It's a little plastic thing with a horn. He it's, drives me crazy because it's beep, beep, all the way I home. Know, you know, and you say, please, and that But he's fun, nothing. and the kids love it. At any rate, she's here. And uh, she and Taters the Clown are taping right across the hall in uh, Studio A, I think it is. We're in B. And we thought, what the heck? We'd like to try to grab her for half an hour. And uh, Who wouldn't? Uh... <laughs> Only in America. <laughs> right, Jerry. Please welcome Miss <laughs> Elkie Summer. doubt that she's working with taters you know it now <laughs> Hi. Well, hello uh, there it's wonderful that we can have you on this show <laughs> we're very happy and Joe and Yemeni you sure are looking new <laughs> what do you think Alki what do you think of my Swedish accent uh well I wouldn't know Jerry I'm German <laughs> No kidding. I thought hey. you were a Swedish. Nope, How nope, about that? Nope, nope. Have you ever seen a bigger pair of shoes than that? I love clown shoes. <laughs> Only Greta Garbo's, I, I guess. <laughs> they make me laugh every time. That's good. Gee, that's great news. Yeah. Elke, I understand you've been all over the world this year making some movies yeah. and doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. And they have some great... Uh, Sweden is well known for its uh, movies. They have... No, really, they have people like Liv Ullman uh, right. and Ingrid Bergman. That's uh, right. Ingmar Ing Ing Bergman. Oh, well, whatever, whatever her name is, she is a marvelous director. <laughs> Very similar in style to Federico Fellini. Of course, he's Italian. Czechoslovakian. Is he? Oh, my yes, God. Yes, so. Well, that's another minority, uh, 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 except in, in Czechoslovakia, where they probably got a big concentration of them, huh? But their styles are very not unsimilar, because, and the only way I can tell, really, Fellini films from Bergman's are that in Fellini's films the actors are usually a little shorter and they wear undershirts out in public all the time. But you're a credit to the Swedish movie industry. She's not Swedish. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. She's German. Okay. It's just uh, difficult to uh, keep those blonde countries uh, separated. It's easier for some people than it is for others, you know what I mean? <laughs> be, we're all familiar with you as an actress and as a very glamorous, wonderful woman. Do you have it, Hannah? Is that yes, Hannah? I, yeah, it's the Egyptian Hannah. It's the real strong Hannah. Fantastic. Feeling bold on top, but That's it doesn't matter. That's great. <laughs> anyway, what about the uh, the private Elky Summer? What do you what do you do in your spare time? In my spare time, what do I do in my spare time, Barth? Well, I paint a lot. Um, I garden a lot. I have a lot of dogs. I have a husband. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh, I have. You could paint your husband while he's walking the dog well, the in the garden. Right. <laughs> you could do it all in. And while he's gone, yes, I could come over and we could dig up some dirt in that garden. Right. <laughs> she, she's the prettiest clown I've ever seen. I'll say. So, that's what I mostly do. You know, right. I'm home so little, though. Yeah, I play tennis. I, like, I really love playing. You like tennis? Yeah. Who are some of your favorite yeah. uh, tennis players? Well, I like Jimmy Connors. I like uh, Bjorn Borg, for instance. You know. What, let me ask you something. What nationality is Bjorn Borg? Why, Swedish, of course. I rest my case. <laughs> if he'd only pack it. <laughs> Now, 
Don't mind him, Malky. Now I'm getting used to him, as a matter of fact. There are a lot of He's things He's kind of cute. He is all right, mm. yeah. He rents the clothes and shows up every mm. night. What can you say? <laughs> Listen, there are some things I'd like to ask you that I think sure. are very important. I don't want everyone to hear things like address and phone numbers. So we're going to break away from a commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> with our special guest, Elkie Summer. You chose the candy that's the same color as the end of your nose. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I guess everyone does. I always go for the flesh-colored. Um, <laughs> Elkie, incidentally, will be doing a special number for us later in the show. Um, you ready for it? What special number? Well, we'll talk about it later. I do want you to do it. Anyway, our next guest is the, is the first South American citizen and also the first South American uh, dictator in general we've ever had on the show, isn't he? And I think he is the first dictator we've ever had on the show. Okay, I good. That's right, Jerry. He's in California on a goodwill tour. Please welcome General Rafael Esteban de Carrillo. Hi. <laughs> see you. Well, we go from a shot in the dark to a shot on our show. <laughs> Let's hope it's as lucky for you. General, uh, welcome to our shores and, uh, and our show. I understand you have been in the military for about three governments now, huh? Yes, sir. And I am here on a goodwill tour <laughs> so I can get to know the country better and improve the relations between your government and mine. And also to encourage Hollywood producers to make movies in my country. Oh, that's right. Fantastic. Funny, we were just talking about uh, people like Ingrid Bergman, uh, F Fellini. Mm. <laughs> I don't know the gentleman. No. Yeah, some of us were just talking about it, and not all of us, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this. Why would they send uh, a general, or for those people who are listening in the northern parts of our country, general, uh, <laughs> why would they send a general to Hollywood? Are, are, are you threatening the producers or something? I'm <laughs> just teasing, of course. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to lighten the border. You see, I am actually the general of the army, and also I am the minister of show business. <laughs> I am trying to encourage the producers to see what we in my country have to offer. What do you have to offer? We have wonderful <laughs> locations for filming, especially for the war movies. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have uh, the world's finest bombed out palaces. We have uh, buildings with bullet holes. But most of all, we have the people. Bombed uh -huh. out presidents. <laughs> but the people, they love show business. Sure. <laughs> they all want to be in the movies. They want to become the stuntmen. They yeah. fall off the cliffs. <laughs> they get <laughs> the car accidents. <laughs> They join the mob so that they can be mowed down with the machine guns. <laughs> but these people come very cheap. We can arrange to shoot anything we want. <laughs> so I've heard. Listen, what about the uh, what about the prisons down there? Speaking of shooting and things like that, we've heard uh, some news reports here in the country about torturing. We've heard that uh, the people have been hanging by the ankles for three days. Horrible things. Is that? That is a big bunch of looky dookie. It's I crazy when you know the language, case. huh? Yeah. A man is choking to death from a piece of meat from a prison lunch. Uh -huh. We turn him upside down to save his life, and the world screams torture. No, this is true, they did. How long did he hang there? Uh, three days, baby, four times. <laughs> it was a large piece of meat. <laughs> Well, better safe than sorry, I, I always say. But what about this, uh, this water torture? Now, I hear about the, these one drop every few seconds on a prisoner's head, and sometimes sorry. for a whole no, week. To me. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, could wear away the hair, you know? Yeah. Some people like slow showers. <laughs> but I don't remember that particular case. Okay, are, are, are you saying that there is, um, no torture at all in your prisons. Ah, there is some torture. But the government has nothing to do with it. The prisoners torture themselves. themselves. <laughs> I guess you've got to... 
kind of a fun place to make movies down there. Uh, spend a little time, maybe even do a little time. Uh, would you please come back and visit us sometime if you're still in power? That'd be a pleasure. And uh, right now, uh, I can't wait to hear your number, Elke. What here. number, Bart? We'll talk about it during the break. Uh, we'll be right back after these words. Stay with us. UBS, we're the best. Remember, we put you before the BS. Tonight on UBS, the Bobby Hardwick Automatic Comedy Hour will not be seen tonight at its usual time in order to bring you a special two-hour episode of The Relatives. Tonight, young Tom learns he has a rare blood disease which threatens his life and his graduation. Brother Bob, Grandma, Stepdad, and all the relatives have to pitch in and do all his chores and homework. <laughs> See this heartwarming two-hour pre-holiday episode of The Relatives tonight on UBS. 9 o'clock Pacific Time, 9.15 Central Time, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, 3.30 in Philadelphia. Not shown in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> oh, they speak three or four languages between yeah. them. They're trying to communicate. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> Without the headphones, you don't see that very often. Oh, we're back. Uh, as you all know, the Quad City Chamber of Commerce here in the area will be uh, soon uh, sponsoring, I guess they are, the first annual Mr. City of Merchandise pageant. The <laughs> Okay, but for those who don't, the uh, top bodybuilders from all over the Southern California area have entered this competition, and uh, we'll be televising the finals here on America Tonight. Meanwhile, three of the semi-finalists, or semi-finalists, depending on, what is it, semi or semi? Uh, well, I think it depends on how you want to pronounce it. I did, I'll think over semi. <laughs> semi-finalists are with us tonight with their uh, number from the talent part of the competition. I guess they divide it up into talent... And then just standing there and then ability to move your car out of the parking lot or whatever they do. I don't know. Anyway, Elke has agreed to help us out in this number. Right, Elke? Well, yeah. I guess I have to now. <laughs> okay. You tell me what it's all about, though, in a little while, won't you? You were going to... Hold on. Oh. But I don't know the thing. You can do it great. Don't worry. It's all on cards. Okay. Okay. You can just read it off the air. So. You wait. can do it and no clowning around. <laughs> <laughs> great. At least she doesn't have a temper to go with this. Uh, she could be very upset. Please welcome Mr. Altaluna, Mr. Downtown Orange Grove, and Mr. Death Valley, along with our own lovely Elkie Summer. Nobody does it better. <laughs> Makes me feel sad for the rest. Nobody does it half as good as you do. Baby, you're the best. Nobody does it better. Though sometimes I wish someone would. <laughs> Nobody does it quite the way that you do, but you have to be so good. Why do you have to be so? Why do you have to be so good? <laughs> <laughs> the equal time principle. First of all, we show a little chest, then we show a lot of it. Okay, we'll be right back after this break. Thank you, Happy. Happy kind, the mirth makers, everybody. How about it? Speaking of making mirth, we just had a rare treat here. I was absolutely knocked out. Not literally by these guys, because I'm sure they could do it, but you were fabulous. Why don't you all come over here, Elkie and, and, and fellas? Oh! oh. Have, have, a seat, right? have a seat. Thank you. Y'all have room here? Fine. Just squeeze on in as best you can. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love it. Like a comedy show. <laughs> now you know what toothpaste feels like. <laughs> So listen, fellas, that's incredible. Elke, you sounded beautiful. Oh, yeah? Really? I didn't even know what I was doing. You just I read that off the cards. Yeah. It was as if you even wrote it. It was amazing. <laughs> Guys, how, let me ask you, how long does it take you to... Uh, have you been lifting weights or something? I have a hunch. <laughs> how long have you been lifting weights? I've been training a week and a half, and he's been training for four weeks. And uh, five. Five weeks. <laughs> wow. So if I started tonight, uh, let's say, uh, about five weeks, I could uh, well, have a good physique my, like that. My new dynamic bodybuilding course, you could probably do it in two and a half. Really? Just... Why do you shave your hair on your chest? So you can see it. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Would it be that long if you couldn't see it if you uh, let it grow? Oh, sure. I've, I've yeah. never seen such incredible chest. Why, how do you build that? Why don't we open that up to everyone? <laughs> how do you go about having a chest like that? Well, well I personally, you know. <laughs> This is what I wanted to find out. We're going to find out in our own time. Uh, we'll be right back uh, tomorrow night, okay? Stay with us. So long. <laughs> Right, some members of our studio audience will receive the following. Classic curves from Ditto's, the Field of Fit Company. Pants to make every woman feel beautiful in sizes 3 to 13 and 8 to 18. And Lillian Vernon's catalog gift certificate. Jewelry, gifts, decor, personalized items, and things from practical to whimsical. Furnished by Lillian Vernon. And Slim Fast, the natural way to lose weight. Packed with vitamins, minerals, and natural protein. Delicious and filling. You can get Slim Fast with Slim Fast. And don't think you're not fat just because you can. Tonight at 11 on Monty Python, it's the visit to the barber shop and a psychotic barber whose real ambition is to be a transvestite lumberjack. Next, our feature, The Naked Jungle. Common Zellick, Clinton Barry Earl, and David Dupress as the muscle flexors with a special guest appearance by Miss Elkie Summer.